Well, today we're uh, here or going around the state, especially in a uh, couple of our hardest hit uh, uh, communities in the state. And uh, here in, in Raynell, they've been hit particularly hard. Uh, Joanne and I just want to uh, convey our condolences to those who lost loved ones uh, here in Raynell and in, in, in Greenbrier County. Uh, the mayor and, and the county commissioner McClung have uh, been kind enough to take us around along with the uh, the fire chief to uh, show us what real devastation and damage has been done, not only to uh, buildings and homes, but to people's lives. And probably 90% of the homes and businesses here in Raynell have, have been, had a lot of damage to them. You see people's furniture just piled up out front. Uh, we got members of the Guard, National Guard here, state police, uh, lots of volunteers coming in to help people just get the mud and the debris out of their homes. It's really heartbreaking. Uh, I grew up in Logan County where we used to have floods on a regular basis and still do, but uh, I just know from a personal experience how tough it is. Once water has gotten in your home, the mud, the, the loss of, of your personal family treasures, your pictures and so forth, and it's just devastating for families. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get through this. Uh, as the mayor told me, this is a, uh, a town that uh, was built to, to, carry on. to carry on. So uh, we'll uh, make sure that the people and the businesses in Raydell do carry on. Uh, we're here you know, listening to what people need and, and try to get everything they can to get their lives back to normal just as quickly as possible. What's the first thing they can expect? You know, I mean, first of all, we stopped by the water plant, which had 48 inches of water in the plant, one of the first times it was ever flooded, but uh, you know, to be able to, to hopefully get them a generator they need so that when they do have power outages or something, they can make sure that people's got good potable water to drink. And, and uh, you know, I just, my hat's off to the, uh, the employees at the water division. Only it happened about three days ago, but about water coming in, even though there may be a bull water advisory there for consumption, people do have water to clean out their homes and, and get rid of the mess that the flood call caused. So, you know, to help people with those things, we got other things, you know, that, that we really got to be concerned about. We got a lot of high unemployment in West Virginia, especially because of the mining, uh, loss of mining jobs. But at the same time, you know, when you look at the hundreds of businesses that have been shut down, that's thousands of people who are without jobs right now. So, you know, we're as part of this whole uh, 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 process of, of recovery, you know, the, one of the things I spoke to the president about uh, yesterday when they called, I said, Jim, Mr. President, we're, you know, a state that's already hit hard with unemployment. You know, these loss of jobs is something that we can't afford and we really need some federal help to help us assist these people find new jobs or get these businesses open and get people back on their feet as quickly as possible so they can support their families. Did the president have any suggestions? He, yeah, he was very, he didn't have any suggestions, but he was very sympathetic and, and basically said, you know, whatever they can do from the federal level, they will do. And they've been pretty good in the past because of the loss of mining jobs by being able to come with retraining dollars and so forth. You know, obviously one of the things I'd like to see is, is some either low or no interest uh, uh, loans for our businesses or some sort of grants to see if they could get back in business or improve their business, hire people back as quickly as possible. You know, that's one of those things I'm going to ask for. You know, hopefully the federal government will cooperate with us and, and so we can get these people back to work and back to their homes as quickly as possible. Governor, some folks over there were saying that they were down at Katrina and this is our Katrina. Would you say something? Uh, you know, it, it's this is one of the uh, probably roughest floods that we've seen. I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, pretty devastating to these communities. Obviously, Katrina had thousands if not millions of people more affected, but at the same time for the, the, the bottom line effect for what it's done to communities like uh, 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 here in Greenbrier County is just as devastating to these folks. Governor, when you were touring around and seeing the devastation, what were some of the things that the residents were concerned about? What did they express to you? Well, obviously just, you know, what they were wanting to is to West Virginians are people who like to stay close to home or they love their homes and you know what they're wanting to do is get, just get the, the mess cleaned up you know and, and get back in their homes as quickly as possible. 
they're proud of what they've got and uh, obviously we're fortunate as West Virginians we reach out and help each other and I know that I've had a lot of volunteers people wanting to volunteer you know to, to come out and help and do what they can and I think over the next few days that's what you'll see is West Virginians helping West Virginians but it's not only yeah this thing is big enough it's not only West Virginians wanting to help but we've had off I've had offers from several of the other governors called and want to know what we could do we have a National Guard unit in here the, from Rhode Island, who's here in Greenbrier County, helping us out now, but people wanting to send water or food or cleaning supplies. So, you know, we just appreciate all those volunteers and all those donations that people are making from all around the country. Have there been, I'm sorry if I got here late, uh, it, what about the people unaccounted for? How many, do you have any idea how many there might be? Uh, I, th I think that just about everyone is accounted for. Obviously, you know, we listen to our local emergency offices, and, and as right now, uh, we may have one or two, but it's no big number. We were very fear fearful that that number was going to go way beyond the 23, 24 that it's currently at. So, uh, you know, uh, and of course, you know, they, as they continue to go through homes and find people that's not accountable, you know, we'll, we'll continue to be available to help do set, uh, 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 re uh, search and rescue uh, missions. Now, and, and again, there were a couple people found uh, that previously were thought to be Deceased? Well, that's my understanding that uh, overnight that uh, they, have, I guess, they have been reported by the local emergency offices that they were missing or they were had been seen falling into the water or something, but they did turn up. So, uh, you yeah, know, that's the reason the number is still just a little bit flexible right now. We should have a good handle on that by tomorrow or the next day. And people here are devastated. I mean, some of them are left with nothing. What kind of signs of hope can you offer them that you're concentrating, things you're trying to do for them? Right, obviously, yeah, we have the VOAG group, so it's the volunteers. It's a great organization that comes in and not only helps people clean up, but helps people repair, get their homes back in order. We got the Red Cross who comes in, helps them with uh, cleaning the aids, places to stay, food, the things they need right now. And obviously, uh, we'll continue. I think with a federal declaration that they'll be able to get some federal help, of course, with a state match to uh, be able to, to get back the furniture, fixtures, the things they need to go on with, get their lives back in order. For, for people who live just outside of the county lines, they haven't necessarily been declared <coughs> um, or been cleared for federal help yet. Right. What do you say to those well, I, uh, you know, I, I think that we will. Uh, uh, be expanding the the, uh, the, the, the disaster care uh, counties. Only three have been declared now, but we realize that that de devastation doesn't stop at the county line. So we will be asking the president to continue to expand his declaration, and I feel sure he'll do it. What, what do you okay. think about the, the, the response to this? And, and the you know is it, a, is it a testament to the spirit of West Virginia that, the, the, for the people to come out and help each other time and we, We've seen it time and time again. We saw it during the derecho. We saw it you know, during the hurricane, the tale of Hurricane Sandy with the snowstorms. People, want, they love their neighbors and they'll do anything to come out, share what they've got in order to, to get their neighbors back on their feet again. That's the spirit of West Virginia. Governor, are you Thank hearing you from around the world though? I mean, are you getting offers of anything from outside West Virginia? <laughs> yeah, well, as I mentioned a little bit ago, I've had uh, probably at least a half a dozen governors I personally talked to, wanted to know what they could, if they're, they could come in and offer any assistance in any way. <clears throat> uh, companies, you know, they're shipping, you know, uh, uh, cleaning supplies, water, people, things that need right now, donating them to the state of West Virginia. Our National Guard's distributing in all the affected areas. So, yes, people outside of the state are also helping.